Hello everybody, welcome to 2C TV with some uh, breaking news from the Middle East. Uh, over the last uh, couple of days we've had uh, tensions escalating. The Iranian regime obviously threatened to attack. Uh, we reported first before the mainstream media. Everybody claimed that it was uh, fake news and of course clickbait. That indeed happened. Uh, we are now hearing new reports uh, coming from Israel and Tel Aviv. Um, they are now contradicting each other, which is completely confusing right now because they, they, on the one hand, they want to give a heads up about a potential upcoming attack tonight. But on the other hand, they also want to surprise the Iranian regime. This is why the confusion comes in. So we're going to go with everything we are hearing uh, and as in coming from the officials in Israel and of course the US allies as well. So much to discuss tonight. So, um, I want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you who've been supporting us because we have actually re reached 444,000 subscribers. We've gained 5,000 new subscribers over the last uh, 24 hours or so. So a big thank you to everybody. We are now becoming uh, the go-to place for most people want wanting to find out what's going on around the world. First things first, let's talk about what is actually coming out of the Israeli government. They are now suggesting that uh, they are preparing to attack tonight. The wording of it matters, by the way. Now, whether they are bluffing, whether they are basically wanting to see if they claim they, they are ready to attack Iran tonight or within the next few hours, maybe they are saying it to see the reaction from Iran. What they will do, the movements, airspace, airports, all the nuclear sites, what sort of movement they have. Or that this might actually legitimately be an attack that's going to be happening over the next few hours. The US intelligence believe that this might just be a, a pre-attack uh, to test the waters. So we'll find out what's happening on the other hand we are also hearing over the last few minutes that the americans have hit the houthis again in yemen at the same time let's not forget that the uh, the houthis in yemen uh, yesterday also wanted to get involved and play with the big boys in the big league uh, but they a little bit failed with their missiles towards israel it was embarrassing same goes with, with the iranian regime the operation last night which was the what was it called the op operation true promise something like that um, we have absolutely devastating news for you guys uh, from Israel. These are the, the level of damage that happened after last night, the attack from Iran. This is the level of damage we had. Ladies and gentlemen, a chair fell over. Uh, the Iranian regime completely failed in their operation. Almost 99% of uh, the, the, the drones as well as the ballistic missiles were intercepted, not just by the Israelis, but also by the UK US, France, Saudi Arabia and Jordan and many other allies as well. So the Islamists right, uh, Islamists right now are having a bit of a meltdown around the world because they are calling Saudi Arabia, Jordan and those countries uh, traitors to the Islamic cult, of course. We are going to talk about this because King Abdullah of Jordan became the hero last night during the attacks uh, by showing his allegiance to freedom and of course stability in the region he completely stopped most of the attacks coming from uh, the iranian regime and the iranians realized they're in a bit of a mess so they decided to go on the streets as we showed you last night to celebrate they brought in about 20 30 people paid them part of the iranian regime the islamic occupiers on the streets celebrating fireworks nonsense uh, while Meanwhile, the Iranian people, actual Iranian people, continue their uprising and protests against the regime. They've been putting on walls, writing on walls, Israel, feel free to hit Iran um, because it's time to get rid of the Islamic occupiers. Now, going back to the potential attack tonight, there are some options according to Channel 12 of Israel. Number one, striking uh, the, 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 well, targeting bases and defense industry facilities in Iran, which makes sense, right? The second option potentially is a significant cyber attack on vital assets. I don't think this will be it. Personally, again, this is my just personal opinion, my biased opinion. Unlikely. If they're going to do a cyber attack, it will be in addition to everything else. The third option is the elimination of senior Iranian commanders across the Middle East. You know, the likes of Qasem Soleimani and those types who have uh, previously been elimin eliminated and been sent to the afterlife to meet the 72 goat virgins and um, we're going to potentially see that more now the way i would see the situation whether the attack happens tonight or tomorrow or the next day or next week whenever it happens whenever they actually do it i do believe that they have to hit 
the actual territory a little bit because the Iranian regime are going to win the narrative still. They're going to go out there and say, we won against Israel, and they're going to continue to gather, rally the troops, get more in humanitarian aid, the United Nations will take the Iranian side as usual, and everything will continue. And this whole conflict against Islamists in general is going to be prolonged. Now, I'm not advocating for a full-on conflict. It's not really in anyone's interest, but Israel has to defend itself. Now, it's ironic because the Iranian regime claim that what they did was in retaliation and self-defense after the embassy uh, attack in Syria. In reality, the embassy attack, which, were, by the way, wasn't the actual embassy. They hit the building next to the consulate, so not directly the actual embassy. Um, that, in fact, was in self-defense and retaliation from Israel's side because the Iranians have been attacking Israel for the past few months anyway through Hezbollah and Hamas. And Islamic Jihad, part of them. Now, the Iranians have decided, the Iranian regime have decided to tell the United Nations that you made us attack Israel. I know, the nerve on those people. Now, as I said, Iran is effing around and is going to find out. On the other hand, the United Nations have been on, relatively on the side of the Iranian regime as opposed to Israel. It's not an impartial international body. It's not balanced. We've seen all the votes, all the sanctions, all the, the, the condemning things coming from uh, the United Nations against Israel on a weekly basis over the last few decades. But of course, the Iranian regime, the Taliban in Afghanistan, Saudi and all the others, Qatar, uh, get invited to join the, the, I don't know, the humanitarian rights, human rights uh, groups, the women's rights groups, free speech groups in the United Nations. You see the problem, right? Now, the Iranian National Security Council have said if Israel wants to continue its evil operations, it will receive a response dozens of times stronger. We will not hesitate to defend ourselves and reveal a small part of our deterrent power. Deterrent power. I don't think these people know how to talk anymore. Anyway, we targeted the Israeli military sites in the attack and there are no other operations on our agenda. That is also a pure lie because the targets last night were not the Israeli military sites alone. They were targeting the civilian areas across the country. And if we weren't for King Abdullah of Jordan joining in the operation to intercept the missiles and the drones, it would have been a problem because the Iron Dome was being overwhelmed at the end if he didn't have the support of the others it would have failed but the iranian regime took this gamble and thought basically we're going to attack and hopefully it's not going to hit israel <laughs> apart from one or two of them now there were a lot of uh, footage obviously coming out last night while we were doing the live stream and obviously at the end i had to apologize because some of them were from a few days ago um but of course the the, the footage that we have is now actually from the latest footage uh, from what we've had uh, over the last few hours. And we also have an update because as we speak, Israel is still under attack. Yeah, this footage is actually from last night. <laughs> Now, part of the uh, the statements coming from the Israeli government has been directly towards America, telling America, we don't want, we don't need you to get involved. We don't need American soldiers to help the IDF. This is our fight, and in fact, we are fighting your fight in the Middle East. We are the frontier when it comes to the threats coming towards the West. Um, and they don't need any um, taxpayer-funded aid going towards Israel, uh, which is, is a good sign, rather than us directly getting involved. Although the Americans are a little bit being uh, uh, tickled. So there are an element of the American establishment who want to just get involved anyway, including the French as well. The French are also very much into uh, joining in. The, the, the Brits, less so, but the Brits always work behind the scenes anyway, as you guys know. Right now, Elliot, uh, these are the situation, the disguise over Elliot that we are seeing uh, more tensions. Israel continue to be under attack tonight as we speak. <laughs> Yo, 
אחלה ספינה נודר, איזה גבר? יואו, יא דמבל! תשמע, איזה בום, יא דמבל. יואו! איך אין הזרקה, אחי? לא יודע, הנה עוד כדבם נראה לי, עוד שזה מטוס, אני לא בטוח. זה לא מצלם לי! אה, זה לא מצלם לך? יואו, יא דמבל, אם הטיסה ירדה, אחו שרמוטה! רגע, יש לך סרטון? בטח! גם של הבום? לא, של הבום רק. So as we said, uh, according to the Israeli government, uh, that they are preparing to attack tonight. But as I said, my personal opinion, and also according to the American intelligence, um, this might just be to test the waters to see the reaction from the Iranian regime, to see the movement in Iran. Uh, are they going to be running away? Are they going to be moving equipment or whatever they're going to be doing in terms of the airspace and uh, airports and everything else? Uh, or they might actually be attacking. So, I mean, I personally think they might just be testing the waters to do the actual attack maybe tomorrow morning maybe tomorrow night but it could happen within the next few hours as they have said but why would they tell us in advance right so question everything in terms of the the tactics being used uh, from all sides this is just a conflict obviously now saudi arabia have come out to kick off again uh, rightly so saudi arabia have said iran engineered the conflict in gaza so that they could ruin the normalization process and the Abraham Accords with Israel. Now, this is absolutely spot on. Part of the reason, by the way, there's a number of other reasons that uh, they, they, it was in the interest of the Iranians for the October 7th to happen. You could also make an argument it was also in the interest of some of the more radicals in Israel for October 7th to happen, to give a justification to go after Hamas and then Hezbollah and then Iran. It's just a strategy. You know, they, you allow... And your enemy to make a mistake and attack you so that you can go and hit back but it was also in the interest of Iran to ruin because they knew if they put pressure on Israel to defend itself Israel is going to have to go all out and the, the, the Gazan leadership in Gaza would be hiding among civilians and in tunnels so the IDF operation will be difficult in Gaza as it has been difficult over the last few months which means longer conflict more pressure on Israel We've had South Africa, the ANC, taking them to The Hague or whatever. Some of the Arab countries, including UAE, been under pressure to kind of criticize the IDF, even though they don't really want to, but they have to. Makes sense. Saudi Arabia and their theory about Iran being behind it also, as well as others, makes sense. It does. Now, as we speak, there's an emergency meeting at the United Nations on Israel and Iran, which, by the way, what do you think this means? this important emergency meeting absolute waste of time useless and pointless organization doing absolutely nothing they simply sp spend our tax money to have meetings about meetings about future meetings that's the whole point of the united nations there's a gravy train that doesn't achieve anything so what's happening here i'm just giving you the headline that is an emergency united nations meeting happening tonight but there's absolutely no need for you guys to watch it i mean feel free to watch it if you want to fall asleep these people are not going to achieve absolutely anything. So that's what we have now. <clears throat> and the truth will continue to be ignored by the mainstream. That is the reality. I'm just uh, trying to find out the latest information as well before I come to the live chat. <clears throat> uh, yeah, of course, the Americans are still claiming that Israel, Israel announcing that they are going to be attacking tonight is to test the waters to see the reaction from Iran and then potentially do it tomorrow. Uh, we will find out. Uh, the, so even uh, the Wall Street Journal is now reporting that the Israel might be responding tonight, um, going against the rest of the uh, US intelligence. Let's quickly go to you guys and then we'll get more reaction as well. Um, Yasmini saying, IRGC are masters of gaslighting and projection. Biggest hypocrites. Absolutely spot on. I agree with this comment. Uh, we have an opponent. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. It's, 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 it's the exact opposite. Lone Welsh droid. Maybe October 7th was a retaliation for 70 years of brutal occupation, apartheid, and dehumanization of a whole people. Stop spewing this pathetic, moronic garbage and read some books. I do love the privileged, middle-class, idiotic Westerners who sit here spending the last few decades living in peace and prosperity and telling us, telling me, about what I should think about the Middle East. Me, of all people. All right, Mr. Welsh, droid. Occupation. 
What's been going on since 2005 and 2006 in Gaza? Occupation? Who was in charge of Gaza? Was it the IDF? Was it potentially, potentially the Jedi forces? Or maybe it was the Islamists that they elected. Also, it's not an open air prison. Prison. They also have a border with Egypt. Feel free to criticize Egypt while you're at it. 70 years. It was Israel from day one that continued to offer a two-state solution. In fact, there was no such thing as an, an Arab-Palestinian territory in 1947 or 48. The whole point of it was that part of it was Jordan, the other part was Egypt. And then they said, well, while Israel is getting a territory at their own country, maybe some of you guys also want to have this bit. Instead of being part of Jordan or Egypt, maybe we'll be generous, you know, have this. They said no. Why? It's not because they didn't want that part. They just didn't want the Jews to exist. Who did this? Every single negotiation failed. Every rejection came from the Palestinian side. Who started the conflicts? Every single conflict since the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Palestinian side. Always started it. There was no occupation or oppression at that time. <clears throat> anyway. Super chat... Uh, from Israel. The IDF announced that at uh, uh, midnight Israel time, the, uh, the civilians it can go back to normal. Yeah, I believe now they are stable. They've they stabilized the situation inside Israel. They are confident that the Iranians will no longer attack in Israel, which is good news. Also, the Iranians will fail again because <laughs> the operation last time was a massive failure and defeat for the Iranian regime. Another super chat from Israel. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, Silver Lady as well. Big shout out. And Jax. How is your dad, Maya? Love the channel from South Africa. Well, unfortunately, he's still obviously stuck in Tehran, in the capital of Iran. He's not able to obviously get out. Um, their situation is not good, obviously, if, they, if uh, there's any attack on the capital, which I still think is unlikely that the attack will be on the capital in Tehran. Um, yeah, my dad might not be safe, but we'll find out, obviously. I'm trying to be in touch with him regularly. Another super chat, a light to share. Thank you very much from Israel. And Catherine as well, saying, it's me again with money for... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, thank you so much, Catherine Gillen. And um, keep up with good work, Maya. Um, and David as well from Israel. It's pronounced uh, Aliat. I, I, I always mispronounce it. Apologies uh, to all the Israelis watching this every single time. <laughs> um, yes, it does bother me as well. Um, maybe you could just spell it the right way. <laughs> or the English spelling, it would help. <laughs> anyway. Um, <clears throat> Matan says, hello from Israel. Yesterday, when the weak threat over, uh, we, we watched your channel to see what you said. Much love. God bless. Thank you very much, Matan, as well. Uh, what is, is going on? Do we have any trolls? <laughs> Wolfgang says, my grandfather said it best. The majority of the Middle East and North Africa were a nomadic uh, until, oh, until yeah, the British came <laughs> to organize their territories. They were all tribes, pretty much. You could say the same thing, I mean, it's parts of Africa in general, even post-British Empire, um, they've gone back to tribalism. And that's why they cannot organize a democracy, for example. Um, certain cultures have found, found it difficult throughout centuries uh, to have it. For example, we had the Egyptians and the Greeks and the Persians having civilizations back in the day. But parts of the, the same continents, for example, never had it because they were always tribal. Throughout the medieval times, tribal. Industrial times, tribal, 20th century, tribal, now, tribal. But now they just blame uh, the success of the West for their failures. But the failure has been going on for centuries, with or without oppression from the West. Or the Egyptian Empire, or the Roman Empire at the time. I live in Israel and there are no reports of an attack. Uh, of course, uh, they, they, well, they, this just came out from the, the Israeli uh, officials, uh, and ch well, Channel 12, obviously. I've mentioned this uh, in Israel, uh, Susie as well, Australia. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, and Lacey Butcher, our producer, saying a fab job, Maya. <laughs> uh, thank you. <clears throat> Deborah says, even the trolls recognize that 2CTV is the only accurate news. Maya, I hope you know how much you are appreciated. Thank you very much, Deborah. Obviously, we do things live and last minute. So any reports that comes... We will have to correct it if there's a mistake or some sort of unconfirmed report. We'll always have to 
uh, clarified afterwards, unlike the mainstream media. That is a difference. For example, last night, there were a couple of clips I showed you guys, but we corrected it afterwards saying that clip was from a few days ago um, in terms of the drones. Uh, but we have to correct it. And this is the whole point is about being honest uh, with the public. And there are and, and when there are unconfirmed reports or rumors, we have to clarify that it's unconfirmed reports. For example, what we are hearing tonight, that uh, some stuff coming out from Israel saying we're, we're planning to attack Iran tonight. As I said, pinch of salt, because they might not actually attack. They might just be testing the waters to see the reaction from the Iranian regime. But if it was the BBC, they would just say, Israel is on its way to Iran, but without any actual clarification. That is the difference between 2 TV and the corporate media. Super chat from Loves Music. Uh, do you think that this ensures Trump gets back in? Actually, it's, it's making it even more likely the, the, the Trump comeback, the more they do this mess. I agree. Much says, come on, Iran, you promised us fireworks. That was such a disappointing night. Stayed up for nothing. No flat fluffy. <laughs> As I said, we did show you the devastating uh, images from Israel after the attacks last night. Last night, This is the level of damage we were dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. That one chair fell. It was, it was absolutely devastating. So <laughs> Iranians failed once again. F around and find out Iran. Just Jill, Super Chats, Super Sticker, thank you so much. And of course, as well as uh, Spray Starch as well. Uh, let's go back. I'm just going to double check the latest updates because, of course, as we said, the Americans are saying uh, they're not confirming Israel's plan to attack tonight. Um, but they themselves, we now have confirmation that the US fighter jets have now officially launched airstrikes against the Houthis in Yemen uh, while we are reporting this. Uh, but the Wall Street Journal is backing what some of the Israelis are saying, that uh, Israel is planning to attack tonight. I still think it's just to test the waters, but you know, we'll find out. Uh, it will be difficult to see if they know. I mean, they, I know they've been having emergency meetings over the last two days in Israel, the war cabinet. But we did discuss these three scenarios. Where did it go? These scenarios, the obvious options for Israel, strike the military bases, defense facilities, nuclear plants, whatever, or do a cyber attack. I think the second one is unlikely. Or elimination of senior Iranian commanders. Now, if I were to ask you guys, which one do you think would be worse in terms of escalation? Let me know in the live chat. You have about 20 seconds uh, to write it. 10 seconds. I'll give you 10 seconds. Write your answers. Uh, because I personally believe that the worst one, the worst option is is not hitting the military sites, is if they go after the Iranian commanders. I know they have once or twice, right? Including Trump going after Soleimani. But I do believe if they go after multiple senior IRGC commanders in the Middle East, that is a bigger crisis. It will make the Iranian regime even angrier than the military sites. That's my personal opinion. It really, oh, by the way, it depends how much damage the military sites in Iran actually receive. But if it's just to send a message. Mm. <clears throat> so we have the first answer. Say number one. Miller says uh, is the first one is probably worse. Uh, let's see what else people think. Yeah, HR says, yeah, if they go after their senior commanders. Chris believes a cyber attack will be worse. <laughs> uh, what else do we think? Yeah, Anglo-Saxon also agrees with me. The commanders will be worse. Loves Music says, no, the first one is worse. Um, as I said, it really depends on what sort of damage they give to the military sites. Otherwise, if it's just the strike on the military sites, it, it will actually de-escalate a little bit. But if they go after the commanders, multiple commanders, or like all of them, the entirety of the leadership across the Middle East, in Syria and Iraq, I think that will make Iran very much angry. And not that they're right, but they are losing the actual senior figures. And that will make the whole thing more chaotic. It's probably best to obviously not have a conflict, ideally. You don't want to spread World War III. <laughs> I mean, ideally, that would be nice, right? But the Iranian regime started this. They effed around and they are finding out. If somebody attacks you, never start the conflict. But if somebody attacks you, you go and wipe them out. You have to. Self-defense. Firstly, especially when you're dealing with an enemy that will never go away. There's never going to be peace. You could even have, ideologically and strategically, peace or peace deal eventually between, for example, countries like Ukraine and Russia. I know there will still be deep historic issues that will continue to be a problem, 
but it's mostly a an ideological um, territorial problem. But when it comes to Islamism, centuries and centuries and centuries, they won't go away. You can't have peace. You could have ceasefire. We had ceasefire on the 6th of October. They broke it. You can't have peace. They're coming for you. The enemy is here right now in the West. It's not just in the Middle East. It's not just Israel's fight. This is all of our fight. And I'm not saying us. I'm not saying we have to send British troops to the Middle East. I'm not saying that. No. And Israel doesn't want us to do that anyway. They don't even want aid. They're doing it themselves. They just want us to not attack them. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, super chat from Brad. Just to let you know. Uh, oh, we'll have that spammer again. What a wank name. Let me find him. I'll find him in a second. Shh, just let me know. How do I find him? Again, we have 12,000 people watching us live, by the way. So the, the live chat is chaotic. It's going so fast. Let me find this account. Do not spam. If you spam, if you copy and paste messages, you will be not just banned, but deported to Rwanda. That's the policy. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. I, I can't find this account. Uh, if if it comes back, let me know. <laughs> so I think I think he got scared now. I don't know. Uh, let's go back to you guys, uh, Heather. This Canadian stands with Israel. Can you tell that to your prime minister? That would be lovely as well. <clears throat> Rene says, uh, "Oh, it's a super sticker support from Rene. Thank you very much." And ASA says, uh, "Thank you for a big super chat, by the way." The old community of Jews that used to live in Gaza perished in Islam in Islamist riots in 1929, concurrent with dozens of other communities. The 75 year, yeah, that's yeah, right. It's just that. I mean, let's not forget what was happening to the Jews in the early 20th century and late 19th century. <clears throat> Bailey from Canada. I think your news reporting and coverage is off the charts. Awesome. Thank you very much for that, Bailey. It's the only thing that will keep, keep me going, your support, guys. Uh, another super chat. Hello, brother. I gotta say, I found your channel recently and you're legit. Only one who goes in debt into this stuff. So cheers. Sky News has pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, they do that too. Well, Sky News pissed me off so much I had to stop my own channel. Uh, Joe as well saying, you're doing a great job, Maya. BBC talking a load of bull as is the rest of the mainstream media. And finally, Cyber Lizard, love the name. Passover's coming, let's drink wine. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Uh, and I can see there's more Super Chat coming. Okay, let's, oh, yeah, apparently there's more spamming. Okay, let me do it. And I'm just gonna go and see if anybody is obviously spamming. You know how hard it is for me to double the multitask, right? Uh, let's have a look. Give me usernames, let me know. Let's work together. I don't know what's going on. Spam, spam, spam. <laughs> I can't. I'm failing at this. Let's go back to the latest update for you guys. Uh, obviously, as we said, uh, uh, the, the report suggested that, that uh, the Israeli war cabinet will be attacking tonight at Channel 13. I keep saying Channel 12. It was Channel 13 that reported this. Uh, the American intelligence said that it's mostly most likely that the, the, the war cabinet are saying that to test the waters in terms of the reaction from Iran. In the meantime, the, the Americans have been hitting the Houthis in Yemen, uh, which is, of course, escalating. It, it, it is it's punishment, by the way, because uh, the Houthis wanted to pretend to be important yesterday to join the attacks from Yemen to help the Iranians. And um, they forgot to set their alarm clock. They fell asleep. It was a little bit embarrassing. They woke up. They don't even shower anyway. So the Houthis were a little bit, I think they were hungover. I don't know what happened with them. They let down the team. <laughs> they let down the whole Islamist team, uh, the Houthis. Um, so that happened. Uh, some some people are saying, I need a haircut. Yes, the, the haircut is coming tomorrow. It's a bit of a mess, I know. It's like a straight afro. <laughs> straight afro, guys. Uh, let's go back to Super Chat from Mark Shepard. Uh, they will destroy their nuclear plants tonight. Um, I don't know. I still can't see it tonight. I don't know. It's just, I, I did say that the two days ago. Is it two days ago, I think, when the Iranians were saying they're about to attack? I said, I can't see it. I can't see it happening. While I was reporting that it's happening. It happened. Failed, but it happened. I know, but the, the Israel attack will happen. The retaliation will definitely happen. It's not, not going to happen. It's just that right now, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Catherine uh, is back. Do you think uh, sleeper cells could be the problem in the West? Yes, 
So one fear that a lot of people have is the actual Iranian regime. Now, the Iranian regime have been a, the, the sponsor of terrorism, the godfather of terrorism, right? Islamism as well. But they have not really much directly been attacking anybody because they've been trying to pretend to be like the mafia. Uh, we are just, you know, we, we have our shop front, but it's actually behind it, we're just doing chaos. But one of the fears that people have, rightly so, and intelligence, is in London, in Paris, in Washington DC, and all these places, the IRGC have people everywhere. The same people who've been threatening me and my life over the last year or so. They will wake up. The sleeper cells will wake up. I'm not talking about ISIL types or Al-Qaeda types. Worse. Much worse than Al-Qaeda. And that will only happen, in my opinion, my personal biased opinion, when the Iranian regime is going down. Not now. Because when the conflict is happening, they will be there to help the regime. When the regime goes down, that's how they're going to continue their fight back. They sleep themselves in the West. They will fail because there are more of us than them. But they will cause enough disruptions. As they are drowning, they're going to be trying to drag us down with them. That's the only fear that a lot of people have when it comes to the IRGC infiltrators in the Western world. Uh, if we don't support Israel to do this, we will end up having to do so uh, for ourselves. Nice speech last night, by the way. Thank you so much for that. Yes, I mean, people said the same about uh, not helping Poland <laughs> about 100 years ago, 80 years ago. It's, oh, it's, it's, time flies, by the way. Time flies as, as if I was there in 1939. <laughs> oh, when I was a kid in 1938 and 39. Uh, Super Chat, uh, India stands with Israel. Thoughts on India, bro. Well, don't get me started with that because uh, I think India needs to get stronger against Pakistan. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's time for India to be more robust when it comes to Pakistan threatening it. Apart from that, if you could sort out some of your domestic socialist policies, it's okay. <laughs> Generally speaking, as long as India continues to um, be a rival to China, it's a good start. Go India. Um, another super chat. It's what? It's what? What? I don't know. Thank you for the support, by the way. Aaron says we are used. Uh, we we are used electronics if if they take out the grid. Well, they might. I mean, well, they, they, the the Houthis have been bluffing for the past few months that they're gonna hit the internet cables in uh, in the Red Sea, right? Now, by the way, if they hit, if they cut the cables, there will be disruption, but not the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's only affect. It's gonna affect aspects of the world when it comes to the networks, but. Uh, I don't think they have the power. Ruben says, uh, hey, Tusi, thanks for the great coverage from last night when Iran attacked Israel. Tell me in your opinion, do you think Iran, Israel will do, attack Iran directly? Do you think Bibi will go it alone? Thanks. Yes, as I said, in terms of the actual attack, any sort of attack, so it could be different scenarios as we discussed. At this point, I know we didn't want to believe it until actually Iran attacked directly for the first time since 1979. Because Iran has done it now for the first time directly, Israel will do it. Not just because they will have to do it, but they will do it. And you know Bibi, he, he always wanted to find an excuse to do it anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> and they will do it alone. I believe they will do it alone. Americans will initially say we, have, uh, we, we are backing Israel, but they will have to criticize Israel. Same with the Brits, the French, and everybody else. Essentially, they will abandon Israel while pretending to be on the side of Israel. Yeah, they, they, they're because we have weak leadership everywhere. They are scared of, because of multiculturalism, mass migration in our countries, they are terrified of the backlash. Super chat from Mandy Ray. Thank you so much, Mandy. And also Jay saying, what's up, Maya? Buy yourself a four pack of beers on me. <laughs> Cheers. Um, I shall do that. Uh, let's go back to the latest updates for you guys. Um, how many people? Are we, we have 12,000 people watching. Only 3,900 have liked this video. How dare you? <laughs> you destroyed my dreams and future. We, um, if you could click on the thumbs up button, like last night, when you guys did it, that video exploded. It went everywhere. It will help the al algorithm. Even if you don't like it, dislike it. Because even if you dislike it, it will help the algorithm. People think if they dislike videos, it was going to go down. Actually, no. Dislike or like will help the algorithm. We have uh, about 100 people who have disliked this video tonight. They think they're going to damage the video. No, it's going to help the algorithm. All the trolls, keep watching. The longer you watch, 
the better for the algorithm. More people will find the videos. Aaron back saying power stations are protected, switching stations not true. That's a good point when it comes to the grid. Al Capone is alive again uh, from Australia this time saying thanks for covering what the mainstream media don't show us. Cheers, Australia. Al Capone. Uh, <laughs> and uh, another Australian. Just wanted uh, to thank you, Maya, as you bring us truth. Cheers. Uh, Mandy again. Come on, people. Click like. Do it. Now we have about 5,000 who've liked. That's not bad. Almost 5,000 have liked. Uh, US. Howdy. From Texas. Amazing. Your show is the only place I can get live news about this across the pond. I recommend a, a quick breakdown the whole day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, let's go back. Okay. I was going to give you the update. I don't know what's going on. This, uh, we have some latest videos from last night. It doesn't matter. Um, we are still waiting to see any update directly coming from Netanyahu's office. They have not confirmed it themselves, apart from Channel 13 reporting it, that uh, the, the Israeli government war cabinet briefed Channel 13 or some of the journalists that they will be attacking tonight. Um, in case you didn't see this, this is actually quite interesting footage. IDF has released this earlier. I'm going to show you this. This is uh, last night, the IDF targeting manually, not just the Iron Dome, manually targeting uh, the drones and the missiles coming from Iran. It's very interesting footage because it shows um, how upfront the IDF are, as opposed to other militaries, like including the US and the UK. Watch this video. <laughs> yeah adam says why would anyone tell when they're attacking well that's been going on that's been the new norm now iran obviously announced they're attacking uh america announced when they attacked iraq i don't know why this became a thing <laughs> apart from obviously um the idf in gaza when they give a heads up um saying essentially um you have 48 hours to leave this like residential area that is also it's, it's moral but in the past it was unnecessary right no military told the civilians to go hide but they, they've been talking about the rafa operation for weeks now it's been months now they still haven't done it because they're worried about civilians but when it comes to the wider conflicts as adam says it, it is weird but it's just become a thing over the last uh, few decades uh that uh you know, they actually give an announcement <laughs> in terms of timing. We're coming at 10 p.m. Um, part of it is, by the way, is because of the New World Order and the United Nations. I know it's stupid, but it became the consensus uh, so that you don't do what Iraq did in 1981 against Iran when they did a surprise invasion. Actually, 7th of October was a surprise invasion, technically. We don't do that anymore, basically. RH says, uh, free Iran from the Islamic Republic. Iranians stand with Israel, down with Khamenei. Spot on, RH. And Matt says, Maya, I am not going to trust your judgment on military matters, as your track records are awful. Um, I do not um, speak on military matters. I don't. Um, the whole point of this, we report what they are telling us. When the IDF releases a statement, or the Americans, we report it. I don't, I don't discuss my own judgment on military strategy. <laughs> Obviously, I give my personal opinion, for example, on the, the three options, for example, and I always clarify before I say it, it's just my personal biased opinion, that, uh, you know, I would believe that if they attack the commanders, if they wipe out the senior commanders at IRGC, it would be probably more problematic in terms of escalation than even if they hit the military side a little bit. Um, but it's not my job to be a military expert. I'm here to report it. 
Big super chat from Brad. All the people calling you a liar. It's so funny, mate. <laughs> anyway, great content, mate. Uh, will the Patreon and members have access to TTTV Plus? Yes. Uh, so we're going to move you guys to TTTV Plus. Yeah. I will, I, when we launch it, we'll send a link on locals uh, and uh, you can move there. Uh, the, it was funny because when uh, over the last couple of days, when TTTV reported Iran is attacking, all these people, and when it was actually happening, all these trolls were coming and saying, clickbait, fake news, blah, blah, blah. The only problem that I have on TCTV is that we reported news first, before the media. But these idiots, because they have to wait for BBC News to report it, they would say, no, it's not happening, it's fake news, right? And then when BBC News reports it eventually, they, they get quiet, they disappear. So all these idiots who are saying clickbait, false flag, whatever. They're not laughing now, are they? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> John Gold, uh, my, uh, you're, my, you're a legend. Here's a pint on me. I can't drink that pint. Hang up. There we go. Thank you. I'll keep that in my pocket. And Mary saying, we watch your channel regularly. Greetings from Scotland. Is that a video of your story and background? You don't want to know. <laughs> it's dark. Um, I think there've been, there've been a couple of stuff. Probably not on my channel. I made speeches. Maybe it might be best actually. Well, part of TTV Plus, I think. Actually, we are doing a new documentary um, on the myth of multiculturalism, which will be on TCTV Plus. And there's a section of it which is about my background. So you're going to have to wait for that to come out and join TCTV Plus uh, soon. Soon. Not going to be a deadline. I'm not the IDF. Um, <laughs> super chat from Dave. Can you uh, live stream it? Live stream what? What am I live streaming? Hang on. This is out of context. What, drinking beer or? I don't know. What's it? <laughs> out of context. Uh, we shall find out. <clears throat> Neil says uh, Joe Biden enabled this attack by relaxing the sanctions, allowing Iran to sell over $80 billion in oil sales to China and $10 billion uh, waiver. The sooner Trump gets back in office, the better. Absolutely. Well, that's why, I mean, if you missed it, this is why this statement from Saudi Arabia is extremely important. Um, saying that uh, they are saying, Saudis, that Iran engineered 7th of October and everything else been going on in Gaza in order to ruin the Abraham Accords and normalization with Israel. And it kind of disrupted, as I said, UAE, even Saudi, they had to kind of come out, Jordan, even Jordan had to come out to kind of criticize the IDF every now and then. Because they're forced. Their hands are tied. But the more this happens, the closer Saudi is going to get to Israel, which is absolutely hilarious, by the way, <laughs> considering the history of it. Uh, if there's one common enemy, and that is the Islamic Republic of Iran, backed by the Chinese Communist Party. Um, JD says, thank you, Maya, for your hard work. Uh, thank you. I thought today was going to be a relaxing Sunday, but no, it's been chaotic. Right, let's have a look, uh, see if we have any actual latest updates, uh, because um, I would personally, again, without giving my military expertise, um, I think the attack was probably going to be like tomorrow night or something like that. But, you know, IDF, uh, well, someone from IDF briefing Channel 13 of Israel uh, that uh, their war cabinet they are going to be attacking around tonight. It's not my fault. They are saying it. Uh, we will find out if they are actually going to be doing it or not. Anyway, I want to say a big thank you to every single person who's been watching, clicking like, and leaving comments, especially Super Chat, and those of you who send us regular PayPal donations, by the way, which I never actually asked for, it's just there. A big thank you to every single one of you. Apologies if I can get back to everybody. Uh, we're going to come back, uh, unless something happens within the next few hours, couple of hours, we'll come back in the morning and give you guys all the latest updates. So you've been watching 2C TV, Amaya 2C, and we are the media.